Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video game cast. Today we're gonna be... What are you doing, hero? We're gonna be having a look at a series. Uh, I think it's the best of five. Played between Hero and Linok. And Hero is doing something stupid. But I don't quite know what. Okay, I have absolutely zero idea what he's doing. He opened up with 13 pylon at home, sent the scout out, and then built a gateway in his main base. This is like a PvT opener, but then with a really fast scout, which makes also very little sense in PvT, or at least isn't very popular. SOS did it for a bit, but I believe he sent an even faster scout than a 13 pylon scout. <sighs> did he not see that his opponent is Zerg? Did, did he forget that he's playing against Linok? And did he think he's playing against Zest or Classic? Or against Trap? Or Zaun? Because this is a freaking PvP build. Except we're lacking a second gas. This used to be... Well, actually, it never was a very popular build. But it was an okay-ish popular build. The one that Hero is playing here. But even then, we build our gateways on the low ground. The problem with this is... Is that I believe it just straight up dies to a Link Flood because you don't have a wall on the natural and you don't have the money to build three buildings. This pylon is misplaced. You're gonna get a gateway, gateway, and then you need to wall with this thing here because this is seven uh, blocks away. Interesting start here out of Hero. I have absolutely zero idea what's happening. Lino probably is also going to be kind of confused. Right now we'll see the late Nexus and let's see what type of conclusion he will draw from this. Well, so far, not much. It's, we only see two links on the way. Queen starting here at the third base. We don't see a queen yet here in the main base. I feel like these two adepts might actually do something useful here. Both adepts getting chrono boosted. Okay. Do we get adept three and four? Oh yes, we get adept three and four. I think we got a small pro cut there as well. Out of hero. Let's see what he will... I don't think... I think Linok has absolutely no clue that this Nexus was too late. Because this was a late Nexus. Okay, this was not an okay timed Nexus. Now Linok realizes and he starts building 10 links. Yeah, that's a little bit too late. You can do that once you see them in the middle. You should be able to tell by the Nexus timing. It's a little bit of theory that you do need to know. Very odd that he didn't quite realize what was going on here. Doesn't have a queen in the main base either. Makes sense because he took this base very rapidly on 20 supply. This is one of the things that Korean Zergs like to do. And this is one of the things that perhaps punishes that. I think that's what the why Hero is doing that. He's, he says, okay, you, all you Korean Zergs taking that hatchery at 20, where's the queen in the main base? How are you gonna deal when I send two adepts in and then two more? Two plus two is four. And Hero says, well, right now I have three adepts. What are you gonna do about it? You're forced to build a crap ton of links. You're gonna lose one or two workers. That's just a fact. And then I just get the shade out. I can go into Twilight Council. This is the problem though! This is the freaking problem. There's no wall. Okay, just let's pretend for a second that rather than building eight more drones, seven more drones, Linok just would have link flooded. L Linok already would have been in at this point with these units and there would be what? Like maybe 20, 22 more extra links on the way right now? This looks... Yeah, okay, he's exactly walling like I thought he would. Now, the reason why we don't see walls like this is because in order for it to be a full wall in which links can't push through, you need to have a building on both sides. Having a wall with a natural structure like this fan... Do you think this fan is what keeps the Overlord up? You know, just shoots it in the air. If the Overlord moves too far to the right or to the left, he'll drop down. Like a bridge. That is a theory I'm working on. But more on that later. Yeah. Uh, Right now, links could push through if there's just a single adept in the wall. There's an, an actual fact. I like the tightness of the build that Hero is playing, though. He definitely did think about this, and he he probably practiced this build before. Um, and I think it pretty much went as good as it could have. But he still isn't in that great of a position, which means I don't think this build is super brilliant. I'm just not the greatest fan of this build. He's going to be hitting extremely late here with a bunch of adapts. His opponent probably is... I'm surprised Linok didn't send in his Overlord because there's not a single Stalker out right now. Maybe Linok says, okay, I see this robotic facility. I kind of know what's happening here. But 
Of course, that's not completely true. It needs to throw down a blind spore here. I don't see any real creep being spread in between the main and the third base, or the natural and the third base. Uh, this being the natural and this being the third base. So queens walking over might be a little bit tricky. How many queens is there? There's three queens, which means there's going to be a lot of units and a lot of money here for Linok. It also means that there's not that many queens. Oh my god, he goes for the surround and he's going to be getting a massive hit on top of all of those adepts. These adepts are getting absolutely blasted. What a start here for Linok taking a, a huge dub here. An absolutely insanely big dub. Now... You do have to be careful as a Zerg not to fall in the trap of attacking with this army then, because attacking into a two-base Protoss is never something I would recommend. You see these Adepts trying to shade in, get blasted. Melee attacks level 1 is about to finish up. These Adepts are actually... The sacrificial drone being sent in. Take my life, but leave my brothers alone. Didn't quite work. Five workers have gone down already. Is there anything here in the natural? No, there's not. So it's just these adapts two of them will survive and perhaps try for another play don't think that's quite going to work as Linok is uh, semi in position i'd love to see a fourth base here out of Linok. well actually would i there's no third base here at all Linok is well aware of that it's gonna get supply block i like the road warren actually way more than the fourth base suggestion if you just get a road warren and start some queen production what really is there that you can lose to if you have three four ravagers Bailing speed and plus two. Okay. You also see a high overcount. Now, I wouldn't mind this, except for the fact that if you're playing against the Protoss and you're doing an upgrade that takes two minutes and 16 seconds to finish, while your opponent is most likely about to attack, those are resources that are not being invested well. It's the same with the Banelings speed. All of these resources that right now are in these upgrades could have potentially already been into morphing Banelings, but... Oh no, Linok underestimating the power of the follow-up push. And, well, he's not dead yet, I think. But, it isn't looking great. The nice thing here for Linok is, okay, this is going to sound stupid. But, because he went for the plus two and the Baneling speed, he can now actually give up his third base. Of course, he much rather would have defended his third base with an appropriate amount of Banelings and Roaches and maybe a Ravager and a half. But instead... If he stays alive, he still has something going for him, and that's his stack and his... Ooh, and his upgrades. Like, Banelings with speed against Mass Adept, yeah, that's a pretty decent unit to have. That, that is a fantastic unit to have, even. A lot of these Adepts are actually gonna... Or a lot of these Banelings are gonna go down before the fight even starts, though. Now Banelings trying to roll forward. Let's see how good the splits are. Splits perhaps not necessary. Banelings don't really reach their target whatsoever, and... I think Hero's just accidentally going to win this game. I don't think Hero expected this. I don't think Linok expected this. And I for sure didn't expect this. It's Linok was just light years ahead on this. Oh my god. Very interesting shade. Half of his units on the ramp. The rest just going into the bailing. Kind of like the sacrificial drone. Except these guys did fulfill their purpose. GG gets called. Hero wins game number one in an absolutely inexplicable fashion. We'll be heading into game number two of this best of five. Game two is going to be played here on Rome. Mantasite? Okay. I didn't see the 14th worker yet being produced, so I was just. I was afraid there was going to be a 13th pylon with a double scout, and that really would have blown my mind. Hero really has a lot of builds that, in my mind, make no sense. I think he's one of the most creative players when it comes to creating builds that look bad and win games. Like, he is. He's one of the most effective winners that I've ever seen play StarCraft 2. MC was a person who played a lot of all-ins and um, very often looked like he was getting lucky. But I felt like MC's build often made a, a lot of sense and were pretty tight. With Hero, it sometimes feels like he just kind of does things and then they work out. But, I mean, there has to be some, some, some well-thought-out plans behind them. I'm just... Not seeing them most of the time. Like, I I understand the two gate, okay? I, I, get, I can get behind that. Against people that like to play 20 hatchery, like a lot of the Korean Zergs do, even after getting blocked, the two gate adapt makes sense. Because you're going to be shading into a base where there's most likely not a queen yet, and the third queen also is going to be delayed. So you're going to have free reign with your first two adapts, and then you're going to have a little more free reign, but not completely free. Semi-free. Uh rain with four adapts so you can get some decent damage in i i understand that thought process okay however what i do not understand is then 
the glaive adept follow up that hits like legitimately a minute after any normal attack would hit rather than just going into something else like a little more defensive perhaps even an oracle i always feel like stargates are just better in that scenario if you can't hit tightly with a glaive adept timing you might as well just not hit at all once again where well this isn't this was a quote i think this was a 20 20 hatchery again yeah actually it was 250 248 or sorry 150 uh, 148 went down this time out of hero just a standard nexus into uh into a straight target even before he starts the adept look at that guys Wow, look at that. That is the fastest target that I've seen in a long time. This hero, uh, it's not even Chrono boosting his first adapt. It's gonna save Chronos. Always pay close attention to whatever hero does because there might be a gem hidden somewhere. You're never quite sure what, what you'll get out. You're never quite sure. Hero is like a... It's like a, a bit of a, a vase, and every time you reach into the vase, some like a random object comes out. And it can be a shiny diamond, and it can be a dried up turd. You're not quite sure, but none of it really seems to be connected. And I'm just hoping for that shiny diamond again. I, I really do like the thought of, in, in that game one, though, the two gate. The more I think about it, then just letting it go around in my head you know spin it a bit i hate this wall but that's fine it's not a fan of that it's just not quite as solid if you're positioned like this i think it's barely okay but if you're slightly out of position in like a, a moment of haste or like of being hurried needing to walk back into the wall the likelihood of link slipping by is just a little bit bigger of how these natural objects work as well Poor crawlers going down. These queens are out of position. Uh, almost in position. Accidentally in position. Holy crap, this base was open. The spore wasn't done yet and you had nothing there. <laughs> uh, accidentally survived the oracle. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Nice to see. You love to see it. You love to see it. The void race over here as well. What's the follow up going to? You see two extra gas. see no plus one here on the air weapon. Could be the possibility. We are going to see a second Stargate. Okay. Here come the adapts. We'll be going for drone number one, drone number two, drone number three, four, and five. I think we get a five even. Dinov not quite quick enough. Might even lose six. No. Five workers against two adapts. Usually the rule is if you lose three workers to two adapts, that that is even or slightly Zerg favored. If you lose four work, if you lose four workers, he's gonna hit it. Isn't it? No, I thought the drone would come back and hit the queen. Um, if you lose four workers, slightly slightly better for tolls. Five workers, good for tolls. If you kill three workers and four is a drone pool, also fine for tolls. Two workers and a slight drone pool, about even. So you know, there's, there's lots of lots of little things, lots of little rules. Also, depending on the size of the drone pool, obviously. Two more workers going down against this oracle and two more adept shading in as well now no way jose that you should finish those five links available three queens close by as well Ooh, double baning nest that's a classic that's something we haven't seen in a while now a lot of you are going to be very confused why would you get double baning nest but this is actually a higher level strategy where if one of your baning nests gets sniped now you can just build banelings from the other one very tight build order here. I like it. Uh, these, are, well, these are some optimizations that we don't see very often out of Zerg. Two adepts do manage to find their way into the third base here. And here the links were out of position. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Four workers going down. Massive drone pool. Look at that. There's about 10, 15 seconds. 16 drones not working. That's a lot of minerals. That's a lot of minerals. Uh, remembering, of course, that one mineral line gives you between... Well, what is it? Like 750, 800 a minute? Not mining for, let, let's say, 15 seconds. That's one fourth. That's 200 minerals. That already pays for your adapts. On top of that, the damage you deal, three, four workers. That's all free damage, baby. It's all free damage. So very good start here for Hero, who's up in supply against the Zerg player. Now, we do have to admit that the Zerg player doesn't have any roaches. Um, so there's nothing here to inflate the supply. It's just mainly drones and queens so far. And 
I guess, oh my god, he was gonna finish it again. And once again, he's going to be able to get a couple of worker kills in as well. Four workers are going to fall. Once again, semi worth it here. I said, there's really nothing here defending for a hero. Hero's just gonna keep rallying Void Rage across the map as well. So Linux was trying to get something done. It's gonna go into Spire. Um, if this is Mutas, I will message Linux on Cacao Top, where I'll still, I think I still have him there, and I'll have to flame him a little bit, because his opponent has plus one, at least two Stargates, from what he knows, going Muras against this would be the dumbest thing I've ever seen, but then again, also Corruptors would not be a very bright call. Cacao Talk is like the Korean version of WhatsApp. Facebook Messenger. Everyone uses it. Oh my god. Five overlords at the same time. Eleven meters. Like, the, this just is not good. There's plus one already. You know that there's this many void rays. Like, there's like nine void rays. Ten void rays. There's as many void rays as there is Mutalis currently. Even if the Mutalis go completely unscouted, okay? Completely unscouted. Which, the chance of that tends to be pretty low. Especially with how aggressive Hero has been. You're still only going to be able to kill maybe, what, 10 workers max. And then you just wasted 1200-1200 on all these units. That are going to be completely useless. Completely. They will have no contribution to this game whatsoever. They're bad at defending. They're bad at attacking. They're a waste of supply. They're a waste of resources. A waste of oxygen. Look at this! He's gonna die to a Void Ray push. I've never seen this in my life. I didn't even know this was possible. Why would he build Muralisk against this? He saw the cybernetic score spin. He saw the fact that there were 8 or 7 or however many Void Rays there were at that time. He saw that they had plus 1. I just cannot comprehend this. The Smiling Assassin is doing a fantastic job and he's showing us, yes, Mass Void Rays is great, but this defense, this this response out of Linog made so little sense to me. Nice kiting. Very nice kiting. Quick response here out of Hero as well. Took the forward base. It's going to be going into a fourth Stargate and has plus two right now. Once again, we have how many workers did he kill? 22 workers killed in a nine minute game. Linog still on 65 workers against 79. Which basically means three base economy against four base economy. He's down. 30 supply as a Zerg, and his army is getting hard countered by his opponent. AKA, he scouted two Stargate Void Ray and decided to only build units that Void Rays are good against. Like, it's fine to go into Corruptor later on with Viper, uh, but first, you gotta start with a bunch of Queens, man. And a lot of drones. Like, you can't play this off of 71 drones. You either need to do a timing and play low drone count. Or you go up to 85, 90, 95, 100 drones. I don't care how many you get. Just get get plenty, you know? It's gonna be destruction. He's just building Void Rays. 22 Void Rays. Look at this uh, innovative player here. Only building Void Rays in adapts. This is the type of beating Grandmaster with stupid stuff that we need. I do like the Investors here. I wouldn't mind seeing a Hive or Vipers as well. Fungal, fungal Parasitic Bomb always has potential against Void Rays, so the game isn't completely over yet, but I'm just having a difficult time seeing how Linux doesn't just die. I mean, there's 200 supply of Void Rays. Well, to be quite exact, there's 100 supply of Void Rays, 25 Void Rays, and they have, I think, plus 2 upgrades. You're just gonna, yeah. Oh, that's a big fungal. That's a good fungal to start with. That's a really nice fungal to start with. Look at how fast these Corruptors disappear. They melt like butter on the sun. Man, man, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, this game is absolutely over. The damage output of these Void my class has been great, it's good. It's good. It's going to be enough as Hero also wins game number two against Linok. Linok needs to tap out and we'll be going into uh, 
the third and potentially the final game of this best of five, Linok will need to step it up a little bit in order to compete with the Smiling Assassin. All right, game number three here between Linok and DPG's hero. We'll see what these guys have in store. Oh, what are we doing? Okay. He cut a worker temporarily. Hero did this last game as well, where he cut his 14th worker for a, 14th worker for a couple of seconds. It's pissing me off and scaring me. This series hasn't been quite what I was expecting of it. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was kind of hoping for some really sick builds and some high level play. Um, we've seen some sick builds, but yeah, Linux has been disappointing me a little bit. And yeah, I wish it wasn't the case because I'm, I'm a big Linux fan. I love his style. It tends to be aggressive with Link Bane Link. It just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be there right now. It doesn't seem to be in the top shape and yeah that makes me a little bit sad he's also playing a little bit too out of touch with the meta it feels like maybe i mean about the first game we can't say too much perhaps the road run was a bit late um, perhaps yeah he shouldn't have gone for a quick plus two that fast maybe should have built a few extra units there but i don't know that second game it just it's not like Void Rays are a new thing. Like, they've been around for like, what, six, seven months now, this type of build order. And Zergs just don't die to them anymore because they just build queens. Or they queen walk. See, I'm just. I'm a, yeah, a little bit surprised that he actually did just kind of roll over and die there. So I respect Lino massively as a player. I think he's very good. He's very quick. He's mechanically obviously sound. See him averaging a solid 300 at this point. I'm still not sure what I think about this 20 hatch. I There's actually a pretty decent story here where um, at a WESG, I want to say in 2019 or perhaps 2018, I think it was 2019, we were talking with Drager, who is a South African player. And for reference, I think Drager is about rank 150 maybe or 160 at the time on the European ladder, maybe slightly higher, 120, 110. So not a bad player by any means, but not the greatest either. Uh, and Drager is from South Africa, and he got the he had the African spot to play to play at WSG because it went by region, so he qualified for that. And in his group stage, he had Dark. And Lambo and Drager spoke before the series. And Drager was like, "Hey Lambo, do you have any strategy that I could just accidentally win with versus Dark?" And Lambo was like, "Well." Dark plays this 20 hatch every single game, uh, no matter what happens. So what you could do is you could proxy four gates. Uh, and with that 20 hatch, it's actually really difficult to hold and almost impossible. And Drago was like, oh, really? So Drager boots up a game against the AI and practices four gate, then plays the four gate against Dark and actually takes a map off of Dark in the best of three. Drager got absolutely blasted in his group, if I recall correctly. Like, he lost, like, 0-2 to way worse players, but he took a map of Dark with his strategy. And ever since then, whenever I see that, that constant abuse of the 20 hatch, I'm like, oh, yeah, like... It's it's good, but it gives you, I believe, slightly uh, better eco, because you get to transfer the, the, the workers from your main faster towards your natural, which is obviously nice. You can start a faster spore as well over there, which means that you have more options on, like, queen movement and spore uh, positioning. So all of these things are nice, at least, but it, it isn't a massive advantage, and it does have some pretty big disadvantages. We saw that in game number one here, and if you want to go back in time, we saw it in Drager versus Dark in 2019. I wish I could remember the map. I wish I had the replay for that game, because that's that would be quite something. That really would be quite something. All right, let's continue on, though. So we have a uh, four gas start here for, for Hero before he takes his third base. Linux spots this, sees, okay, this, this isn't going down before the four minute mark. Very suspicious. If you're a Zerg player and you don't see a Nexus go down before 4.33, I think alarm bells should start ringing. Maybe not if you see three oracles though, then you're probably just a bit confused because what is the point of getting the fast extra gases? Okay, it's going to be triple oracle. Is this mass oracle? Is he going to mess Oracle? 
Wait, what happened with the overlord? It just went home? Oh yeah, then you're not gonna... He's actually messing oracles. Mess oracle is back, baby. Oh no. I... Freaking hero. I bet he noticed that the... The Void, the void Ray went... Or sorry, the Overlord went back. And I was like, alright, I'll throw down a second Stargate and we're gonna mess oracles. Good luck, buddy. He's doing so much damage. So much damage. Ten workers have gone down. If some of it was on these oracles, I didn't see them come into action, but it must have been. It can't just have been those adepts, right? Two more adepts once again going across the map, and it feels like Lino continuously is falling in the same trap. He defends something, and it's like, hey, let me move across the map, see what I can do. And then as he's across the map with his only defense, the two adepts come in and kill another ten workers. Yep, here you go. Once again, completely caught out of position. Four oracles are already done. Oh my god, he just attacked the... A drone that went into the thing? Or did he end up getting it? I didn't quite see it. Four workers, five workers. Yeah, this is not good. 21 workers have gone down in a six minute game already. 22, 23, can we get 24? Oh no, no 24. Yeah, and now trust me, a whole lot more workers are going to fall here as uh, we see Hero flying across the map with the boys, the squad. Oh my god, there's no spore here. There's no spore against the triple oracle opener. Even against triple oracle, that's not a great idea. But against six oracle, that definitely isn't a brilliant plan. Uh, every single queen going down here. Spire is going to get targeted down. I think he could even go for these spores if he truly wants to. Um, doesn't really seem to care about it. Is it just going to go for the hatchery instead? Says, okay. Um, I could have gone for the spore, but instead I just get your hatchery and I'm gonna get your spore and I might as well take out your extractors as well while I'm at it, but maybe he doesn't want to do that. All of these oracles right now are out of juice, so they need to uh, regain that a little bit. He continues building oracles as well. Hero can play like such a clown at times, but he is our clown. We claim him. This is beautiful Star Trek 2, alright? If you don't like it, then you can go suck it, because this is great. Oracle's looking for damage. Um, they're looking for something they already have, though. Because a lot of damage has already been dealt. Taking out a hatchery with Oracle feels marvelous, I have to say. That is a feeling uh, that is hard to describe. Oh, this Oracle also is going to get a feeling that's hard to describe, and that's that he's going to get forgotten into the spore fire. Uh, I guess five or six hits. These two roaches manage to sneak in. Double stalker warping will be able to save heroes natural. And uh, will the sentry go down? Yep, one sentry will go down. I'm, yeah, I'm not really feeling it here for Linoc. I'm gonna be real with you guys. There's 49 workers against 66. There's more oracles on the map right now than there are fighting units. Actually, there's three times as many oracles on the map than there's fighting units. If you include the queen as a fighting unit, ten muralisk are on the way. This time I don't mind it as much because oracles don't have great anti-air, so phoenixes or blink stalkers need to be the answer. If the mutalists get out of the base before they get spotted, they might actually manage to, to semi-sneak by here. Look at that. Look at that. They're gonna sneak with this is really nice. This is really, really nice. I still think he's going to basically need to kill two entire mineral lines and then the game might be even, but. I mean, he's at least trying something, you know? He's trying something. He's fighting hard. He's going to get a couple of workers here. This is a nice start here for Linok. This is a less nice start on the other side of the map. He's going to lose another base to these oracles. Six, seven, eight, seven, eight. Yeah, eight workers have gone down. Uh, 56 against 59. Yeah, he needed 20, 25 workers. 26 workers. Actually, more like 30 workers. He legit needed to kill half the workers. Because the army already is so big here for a hero. So you really need to to handicap your opponent hard. You, like your opponent needs to be incapable of ever reinforcing anything. And then the Roach Hydra follow-up, you know, could hold a counter-attack. But right now there's not going to be a counter-attack because Hero doesn't need to counter-attack. He's still up eight workers. He can attack. He doesn't need to. The Oracles are still alive. These Mutas are hunting for them, but 
Yeah, Oracle's turn around, say adios, Miralisk, and uh, Linux is none the wiser. There's two cannons here, we'll be able to deal with that at least a little bit. I mean, a couple more workers will fall, but they can't stand here forever. As we see, first Miralisk is gonna go down. The real problem, however, for Linux is what's happening on this side of the map. We have two Roaches and seven Hydras against 25 Stalkers, nine Oracles, and nine Sentries. Linux. Uh, did the counting, he did the math and said, all right, I don't think I need to play this game out. Taps out and Hero wins game number three as well. Winning the best of five, which, yeah, it's an okay best of five. We saw some fun fun strategies that we haven't seen in a while, but I don't think this was the highest level best of five. Nonetheless, kind of entertaining. So uh, if you did find it entertaining, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully we'll see you all next time for more videos here. Bye-bye.